Okay. Uh, okay. My name is Peter Franken. Uh, I'm uh, a co-founder of Safecast, and would like to talk about it. Safecast started uh, five years ago uh, as a, a response to the uh, Great Tohoku earthquake and the Fukushima nuclear disaster that came out of that. Uh, literally, uh, literally up to the day tomorrow, five years ago, uh, we uh, uh, we all woke up to the earthquake and we suddenly had one more extra problem, which was a uh, radiation threat uh, to our lives. Uh, very quickly, we wanted to just know what is, what is happening out there, and we found out that there is no information about radiation levels. Uh, as, a, you know, as a reaction, we said, okay, maybe we can collect this information and put it on a website and share it with people. We did that, but we found out that there was no information, so we kind of failed, and then we said, okay, Let's get some money and let's try to buy lots of Geiger counters and we give this to people so that they can, can go measure. And that didn't work out. So then we said, then we'll go and build equipment. We'll put it on a car, we'll drive around ourselves and we're going to start to collect that information. Then we put it on a map and then we'll share it to everybody. So easier thought than done. Uh, and we had to do it very quickly because time was running out. People were leaving uh, and needed to do. So we used the power of the internet we very quickly were able to connect to people uh, all, over, uh, all over the world that uh, said, that, how do you measure radiation? How do you put things together? We had, uh, we had technology people, we had people that can organize things, community folks, we had uh, researchers, we had all kind of uh, uh, people that, that worked on that space. Then what we did was we said, okay, let's put Geiger counters on cars. So in Tokyo, there's a place called the Tokyo Hackerspace. It's a group of do-it-yourself people that try to do things, and we went there, and we started to build a system which is uh, something that looks like this, but it looks a little bit bigger than this. But it basically is a compact system that you can very easily put on the, on, on the window of a car. So once you put it on the window of a car, you can drive around, and you can collect radiation levels as you drive around. It's, it's a little bit like Google Street View. It's the same idea, but then with radiation. So, uh, so we built the system, and we built it in a week's time, and on the, the, the next day, uh, we, we drove off. Initially, we wanted to use electrical cars, because we thought that it's better than uh, cars that uh, uh, run on, uh, on, on, on gasoline. So we got some help from a very famous electrical car maker, and we got lots of volunteers. And so it was really great, so we had lots of volunteers to go up to Tohoka. But the problem was is that there were not uh, re recharging stations. There were no recharging stations in, in Tohoka, so we ended up going with a um, a, a, Nissan, <laughs> a Nissan, very old car that was donated to us, and we put the, we put the Geiger counters on it. This is how we came to, uh, to our first city we measured was Koryama City uh, on uh, April 24th, uh, 2011. Uh, once we built these things, initially we were driving up to, to uh, Fukushima to measure ourselves. Very quickly we made these things so easy to use that we can give them away to people in Fukushima so they could go measure themselves. This is one of our vol first volunteers to measure on his own in Iwaki City. Uh, and they measured the entire city of Iwaki. It's a very large city. It's the largest city in, in Fukushima. Um, you can see this. Okay. Uh, what also happened is these devices were also very useful for people that were working inside the exclusion zone. And uh, before they had uh, our device, which is, uh, they, they had to walk around with clipboards and take readings. After they had this device, they could walk around and just take radiation readings automatically. What it did is, is that it basically put tremendous amount of data on the map. And you can see that here. You know, before we started, there was literally no data. And um, we could measure literally street by street uh, every little detail uh, we, we were able to map it. So this allowed people that were living in, uh, they could see the radiation level in their own street. So here, these are two people that were evacuated out of the uh, area near their power plant shortly after the disaster. And this, they, were, they were evacuated to a city in Aizu. And here they're looking at our map to see what the radiation levels are at their house, which they couldn't reach. So this is basically, you know, it it's really is very important for people to know for themselves what happened. Our other breakthrough came is then lots of people wanted to get these things. And then we basically turned this, we, we made this accessible so everybody could build this on their own. We made it open source, we made it open hardware. And um, by doing so, people inside Japan, but also outside of Japan, could basically build these themselves. So here you see uh, uh, some of our volunteers. This is an Aizu workshop where we're building the Geiger counter systems together. And we have done many, many of these workshops where people have been successfully been able to build these themselves. So what that did is, is that instead of us building things for people to measure, now everybody can do this themselves. 
So what that did is, is that suddenly we, uh, we could start measuring radiation outside of Japan. So large parts of Europe, the US, and increasingly other parts of our planet, uh, volunteers uh, have built this themselves and start measuring. Um, so that, that kind of self-fueling uh, uh, passion is happening. Another thing we have been working on um, is to measure radiation in one single spot all the time. And we call this the point cost system. It is basically a sensor that people can install on their house and it will measure radiation 24 hours a day. This is very important because radiation changes slowly, but people want to know that it actually is going down. And uh, here you can see uh, uh, our volunteers have installed the sensor. You can see it above, above the doorpost at a, a community center that is about to open about uh, around this time in Okada, which is still in the evacuation zone. And this will allow uh, people that go to community center to see the radiation levels real time at the community center. Uh, we have got so many questions about radiation that we started to document them. We wrote frequently asked question lists and last year, we put all our know-how that we have collected over the last five years in a report, and we call that the Safe Cause Report. It basically is the first citizen-driven scientific report of the Fukushima disaster. Uh, please read it. Uh, what happened is, is that lots of people said, oh, radiation, that is, of course, important, but what about air pollution? What about quality of water? So we started a project uh, to measure uh, our, the quality of our, of our air. It's called Safe Cause Air. And this is uh, one of our first prototypes, which we're testing out right now. It will measure PM levels. It will measure various gases. And that is about it. Thank you so much. Yeah.